So, dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vinko Mandel and usually I am the CEO of the Ptuiska Kled Winery from Ptui, the Pulus brand you probably know. And this is an attempt to make a very private video for all our wine lovers around the world with a personal touch. So, usually I am behind the scenes and that is where I go. And people who will now talk to you are the ones who are most responsible for our, our wines our flavors and the creators of Pulus Taste. Hi Max. Hi guys. Who are you? Well, I'm uh, the winemaker in the Tuiska Klet, Tuiska wine cellar, and please now meet our right hand, Peter. Hello. Dobro došli, Tuiska Klet. We are now at the heart of the Tuiska Klet, and I hope you will get the message you will feel the power of our wines and even through the camera but anyway so the first question is why are you in the wine business max uh, because enjoying doing uh, good wines and this is the most important when you are doing wines that you are doing them with heart with with feeling and in that way you are the most successful winemaker <laughs> Uh, now a very serious question behind the scenes. Yes. Why, what makes uh, the Pulus wines special? The Pulus wine special is um, the quality, uh, the nice aromatics, balanced, balanced flavors and consistency of winemaking and of course uh, terroir of our land. Um, can't pick grapes because we, we cannot use um, the machinery because of so high declines. Uh, we don't we don't use irrigation because we have enough um, rain. So that are all the, the factors which are making our uh, area so special and in other way so hard to do good wines. Do you agree, Peter? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I agree. <laughs> uh, see you soon. Try the new vintage. Would you tell me something about the history of Tuiska Klet? Well, we basically say that the history or the heritage of wine growing and wine making in the city center of Ptuli, where Tuiska Klet is based, goes back to a year 1239, last year. So, 777 years of constant wine making in the city center. And the proud ambassador of uh, this heritage of history on one hand and great flavors, as you know, of wines is nowadays still Ptuska Klet. So we could say really long tradition, a lot of knowledge and many experiences. That's it. The winemaking. Yes. So that's, that's uh, basically our heritage and also great responsibility, to be honest, to maintain or even increase the good the good uh, 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 voice uh, and uh, um, the, the sp to spread out the message in the bottle throughout the world. And there were some merchants, very popular ones, like family-owned businesses in this, mm -hmm. uh, in this uh, area in the 17th and 18th century. Also those who built that uh, wine um, cellar? Yes, yes. There were some families who uh, some still do uh, business, but this cellar was uh, basically built by a former mayor of uh, the town Ptui. Mm -hmm. And after the Second World War, um, uh, it was nationalized. And in 2002, a local multinational company basically brought the whole, uh, the whole cooperative, it was called mm -hmm. back then, in the Yugoslav times. And now we are, let's say, a proud member of uh, our owners group, it's called Protina Ptui, the Protina Ptui group. And uh, for the last 15 years, uh, we could say that we have rebuilt uh, and restarted the philosophy of, of, the, of wine making and wine growing. Why? Because in the past, 
quantity was before quality. Now we put quality first. So we go back to the vineyard and mm -hmm. try to basically see the end product or the end creation going back from the glass to the vineyard. So we know what the terroir is. We know uh, our vineyards, mm -hmm. we know our wine growers and we believe in them. So we have a great crew, as you know, and you are part of it next, our new winemaker. Uh, we have uh, skilled uh, cellar masters, skilled cellar workers, and everything we do, we do with the striving for perfection. And we hope, we hope that you, our wine lovers around the world, uh, basically uh, uh, feel that with every single sip, as we do. And it's true. So mm. now that you are responsible for the taste for the last two vintages, basically, in general, for all of them, I would ask you, not knowing anything about Swiss wines at present, how would you describe them? Well, like you mentioned, this uh, cellar has a really long tradition, uh, a lot of know-how. Um, the people who work in this cellar uh, also know the plots and everything, and they don't know they don't they know where from come comes the best grape. And this is the first and one of the most important things uh, that winemaker or me as a winemaker I has to know to make a great wine. Uh, so first is selection of the plots and as you know we have several different uh, bottlings and one of the best cells is uh, Purus where we selected just the best plots. So we start from the vineyards, we observe uh, the soil, the climate, um, depends from which region it comes from, is this uh, Haloze which is a bit warmer place. Uh, the ground there is also different, um, usually there we find a marlstone, marlstone and sandstone mixed with uh, also with some clay. Really? And, yeah, and in the other parts of uh, Haloze we found quartz or uh, the, the other known word is flint, which also gives a different potential and different kind of aromatics to, to the wine. Uh, so the wine making, uh, we respect tradition, but we, we changed it back then, like you said, in 2007, um, to make these wines modern, uh, respect the tradition, but on the other hand also built on the quality. Um, our our pr produ production is, um, is, let's say, goes to reductive uh, circumstances, which means that we carefully protect from the berry when the grape come in the cellar to the bottle everything protect with um, actually we take care there is no oxygen in the production that means uh, we keep we keep the fruity flavors uh, we keep the wine fresh without adding any other chemicals um, and what is also important our wines like they are especially in pools they represent our terroir uh, how the wines from Stajka should be, or let's say from our region, and this is the most important, so that we preserve what grape can give us to the glass where you enjoy it now. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. So, in general, uh, when we will look at the relief uh, 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 map of Slovenia, you will see that we are basically um, placed in a very interesting area. That's why I also think the wines uh, stayed here for such a long time. So now we are in the front of the Slovenian map. Ptu is located here. Slovenia is surrounded with Croatia, Hungary, Austria and Italy. Here we see that comes to our land Mediterranean influence. From that part these are the Alps. Comes the Alpine, Golden Air and here from the Pannonia in summer and autumn really hot influence and in the in the in the winter a lot of cold air so Ptuj is located in the drava river uh, valley our grapes to our wine cellar which is here in the city center come from the south from the halas region which have an average height of 400 uh, meters they go up to uh, 1000 meters above sea level. On the north part we have so-called uh, uh, Slovenske Gorica and wine region and the majority comes from the central part where we also have uh, hills up to 400 meters. 
a part of our grapes come from our vineyards the, at the north borders, uh, north from Maribor and uh, south from Zuchtamark on the Austrian part, uh, which uh, have hills up to 300 meters. The majority of our vineyards are terraced and the majority of terraces are in the Halaji region where the average uh, yield per uh, hectare is 2,000 wines. So this mixture gives our wines its specifics and they are uh, always like, uh, for me it's tickling uh, before every season now, we are now in, uh, in, in March. The most nervous and time. It's, no, it's a good weather, it's sunny outside, it's going to warm up to 20 degrees Celsius, so you still have the cool nights and that's what makes the difference, I would say, although uh, uh, this uh, differs, but the, for me, as I, I'd say, just somebody who does not have the experience really from education, but being the salesman or to die for everything except but for wine. It's you, you the interesting thing is that uh, that you have still you, you can have warm days, but still mm. you have cool nights. Yeah, that is also. And I mean the time of harvest. Yeah, and that is good. Through the day, we get a lot, lot of sun. Um, the 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 humidity quickly vapors out from the grapes. So you don't have a diseases. That means less spraying. Uh, but through the night, the nights are really cool. So you preserve the acidity, and that goes goes together. You have actually high potential to make really nice ripened wines. But on the other side, they are fresh. And like you said, the mixture of all those three: the Mediterranean, Pannonian, the, and the Alps, makes makes our region so special. You have actually the whole range, even on the aromatics. And on the other hand, you can make really wide range on the typicity, uh, what kind of wine you want to produce. But of course, depends on the year. You said, for in general, if you would uh, try to explain uh, uh, where Slovenia is, what its specifics are, how to understand it, we have asked, uh, let's say, professor, your professor. Yeah, uh, that was my professor, also on the faculty. And let's uh, hear, let's hear what he said. Yeah. No, lahko rečem, da uh, sama tehnologija v aptujski kleti je naredila ogroman premik uh, v stil vina, ki se danes, se pravi, je popularn, ki se uživa, to se pravi, v svežino, prepoznavnost arome. In tu je lahko rečem, da prvi, ki je to pot tudi zagrabil. Uh, res, da ima podravje, vse te možnosti, sortne značilnosti, ki pa so bilem, lahko rečem, malo premalo izkoriščene. In tuj sledijamo tudi slovenske konice in tako naprej. In Ormoš, da ne pozabim, so začeli izkoriščati svoj potencijal, ki ga nudi grozdje in pa seveda geoklima. Slovenija se mora zaveda tega, da je vinarstvo ena obliko panoga kmetijstva, ki je avantgarda. In uh, ni samo Slovenija povezana z vinarstvom, pač pa tudi z vinogradništvom in tu gre tudi za okolje. Uh, tistih 16 tisoč ali pa 22 tisoč hektarov, uh, ki jih imamo Slovenci, nam oblikuje tudi, tudi pokrajno. Tega se moramo še bolj zavedati. Uh, res, da nismo, mi se vedno primerjamo z velikimi vinogradniškimi deželami in jamramo, da pač uh, ne moramo z velikimi količinami konkurirati. Vendar prihodno slovenskega vinogradništva vinarstva je v tistem botičnosti, v tisti, tisti prepoznavnosti, sortnosti in pa raznolikosti, ki jo nudi Slovenija. Vse te tri vinorodne držele imajo vsaka svoje specifiko in to je vsekakor ponudba, ki ni zanemarljiva. Samo za primerjavo lahko povem, če se pelete po Španiji, po Argentini, se pelete tri ure, 300 km, pa pelete isto vino. Predam se pa tudi čisto nekaj drugega. <laughs> so this is the end of our promotional or presentational video. Looking forward to see you soon and enjoy in the beautiful world of the wine.